All right, going to do a video refuting this Torch of Christ Ministries. He's a uh, charismatic, tongue-talking uh, wingnut. And he, like all charismatics, go, they believes if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you basically lose your salvation. And he's basically a Roman Catholic. He teaches a uh, works-based salvation that you can fall and you have to it just they, they turn salvation into this continual process of, of you know, striving and enduring and that kind of stuff. It, it's not like a one-time event as the Bible teaches. And uh, he basically is teaching basically the charismatic heresy that bl you can blaspheme the Holy Spirit and basically lose your salvation. And he gives a ridiculous explanation. Um, he says basically, oh, you can't blaspheme the Holy Spirit if you just if you're not convicted. He just it, it just and, and he doesn't give any scripture to back it up either. He just it's all his words. But let's get right into refuting this. And, and he also says he basically, he basically in this video also says you can lose your salvation too. Obviously, he just flat out denies what the Bible says. So let's get right into this. What's going on guys? Philip Blair, Torch of Christ Ministries here in Bristol, England, in the United Kingdom. And uh, me and my friends, we just had lunch. We had a conversation about blaspheming the Holy Ghost and what it means to actually blaspheme uh, the Spirit of God and how you can identify whether you've done that. I believe that one of the most significant things that we took from our conversation is that someone who blasphemes God's Spirit will not have any conviction of sin after having done that. If the Holy Ghost was in you or in your life at that point when you did that, you would then be left completely reprobate, godless, and without conviction. If you've blasphemed the Holy Ghost, you will not feel any remorse or guilt for your sin. There are many Christians out there who are worried and scared of whether they've accidentally blasphemed him, whether they've accidentally committed the unpardonable sin, and the truth is, if you're in a state where you even worry that you've done so, you haven't. Because if you had, his spirit would have totally left you. You would have no conviction of sin. Um, his spirit would have totally left you. Um, doesn't the Bible say in Ephesians 1.13 that you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise? How can the spirit leave you if you're sealed with the Holy Spirit? You know, and I'm going to cover some scripture later on because I'm going to cover the scripture. They always love the twist to prove this heresy, but let's continue. But he just says the Spirit can leave you. Uh, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is sealed in you. Ephesians 1.13. You can't lose that if it's sealed in you. You know, he's a liar. He's teaching heresy. And, and you would not be worried about it at all. You would be completely lost in darkness, and your sin would be enjoyable to you. You would have no regret, conviction, or remorse. I want to emphasize that. God loves you with an everlasting love. He is not looking to forsake you or betray you or turn against you. You can't accidentally blaspheme His Spirit. You have to know what you're doing. Read your Bible, pray, seek the face of God. He will be faithful to you, okay? Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is a very difficult thing to do. I want to encourage you today because many believers are being lied, by the, uh, lied to by the enemy. We're believing these lies. Every time you hear these evil thoughts or you start believing uh, things that are unbiblical. You need to identify the emotion that you feel in that moment. Begin to speak out loud. Say doubt or unbelief or worry or fear. Whatever that emotion is in that moment that makes you think that you have committed that unpardonable sin. Speak it out loud and say, I bind you in the name. Uh, there's no scripture given for any of this. I mean, where is this at in the Bible? Chapter and verse, please. You see, with his charismatics, it's all just their feelings. There's no scripture given. Because with these charismatics, their feelings basically overthrow the scriptures. You know, because again, where is any of this at in the Bible? It's not in there. In the name of Jesus Christ, and I command you to go doubt, get out right now. A spirit of blasphemy and an antichrist spirit are the two main demons that are behind causing believers to worry about whether they've blasphemed the Holy Ghost. Pray against those two as well. Um, a, a believer can't have an Antichrist spirit in him. You can't have the spirit, the Holy Spirit and have the Antichrist spirit in you at the same time. You can't both be saved and lost. It's, what? I mean, and again, where's any of this at in the Bible? It's not in there. Let's fight in the spirit realm. Let's stay strong in the faith. You can do this. Don't quit. God is okay. And, and, you know, here's the verse they always love to go to. I say you can blaspheme the Holy Spirit, and I'll show you what what how they're twisting it, and what Jesus Christ is actually saying when he means you know don't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter twelve or thirty one to thirty two, wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh the word against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. 
Okay, what is the world to come? It's the kingdom of heaven, the millennial kingdom. Okay, what's Jesus Christ saying? Speak a word against the Son of Man. You can only blaspheme the Holy Spirit when he's on when he's physically on the earth. You know, because when he's on, when he's on the earth, he's speaking according to the Spirit of God. He's, he has the Spirit of God in him. So you can only blaspheme the Holy Spirit when he's physically on earth. That's why he says, neither in this world, referring to the, when he's on the earth, neither in the world to come, the kingdom of heaven, when he's again physically on the earth. You can't blaspheme the Holy Spirit right now and lose your salvation because Jesus Christ is not physically on the earth. That's simple. So it's not saying you can blaspheme the Holy Ghost and lose your salvation. This is, this is how they twist the verse. Because charismatics, they like to have, they like to, it, it all comes down to control. The charismatics, they want to have control over their followers. So they say, oh, you better be careful. Don't speak against, don't speak against the man of God. You, can bl you might blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Uh, no. He's saying neither in this world nor the world to come. You can only blaspheme the Holy Ghost when he's physically on the earth. And if you want, if you want some proof on that, read the book of Acts. And when they were speaking according, when they were speaking with the Spirit of God and doing the sign gifts, they were being mocked, and they were never. And, and the, the apostles, when they were being mocked for speaking with the sign gifts and speaking with the Spirit of God, they were not threatening anybody with with uh, blaspheming the Holy Ghost and committing the unpardonable sin, because you can only do when Jesus Christ is physically on the earth. And on this thing of losing the Holy Spirit, you can't lose the Holy Spirit. Because Ephesians 1.13 says that you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Let me show you that. Ephesians 1.13 In whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you are sealed, sealed, sorry, sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Okay? You cannot lose the Holy Spirit. It's sealed inside of you. Okay? And it's some more things of being sealed. Ephesians 4.30. It's funny because these charismatics will never cover these verses. It talks about you being sealed. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? The day of redemption is the resurrection, falsely called the rapture. So you're sealed. You cannot lose that. You know? And I, I someone will try to say, well, the seal can be broken. Well, for those of you who say the seal can be broken, here's the thing on that. Because here's how you answer them on that, saying the seal can be broken. John chapter 10, verses 28-29. And I give unto him eternal life. Jesus Christ gives us eternal life. We don't have to give ourselves eternal life by continuing and enduring and that kind of stuff. And I give unto him eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Find next verse, I and my Father are one. A little bit of a side note. Jesus is God the Father. How do we know? No man is able to pluck them out of Jesus' hand, but then the very next verse, no man plucks them out of the Father's hand. So wait a second. If they're two separate persons in the in this Trinity thing, what, what I mean are they just like sharing who holds the Christian or whatever? Or are they like or, or as Brian put it, playing catch with the Christian? Uh, no, and he confirms it saying, "I and my Father are one; they're one being." But notice that Jesus says, "I gave unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish." Okay, so if you can somehow lose that seal of the Holy Spirit, that means you're apparently that means you're apparently better than God. You're somehow more powerful than God because. You know, you can't be plucked out of his hand, or it says no man can pluck you out of his hand, but you can somehow pluck yourself out of his hand. You know, I mean, so apparently you're better than God. You're somehow more powerful than God. Sure. Ridiculous. You can only blaspheme the Holy Spirit when Jesus Christ is physically on the earth, and He's not physically on the earth right now. Second Corinthians chapter one verses twenty-one, twenty-two. Now He which establisheth us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Okay? Again, you're sealed, and you have the Spirit in your heart. You cannot lose it. It's that simple. Uh, I'm trying to think of another verse. Oh, yeah. Here's another one that makes a problem for them. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. And because, again, you know, these charismatics are works salvation. They believe you have that works to be saved. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Okay, it's a gift. Okay, if it's a, if it's a gift, you don't have to work for your gift. That's that simple. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay, when you're saved by works, you can boast. You can boast with pride. It's not by your works, it's not of yourselves. And on the thing of salvation being a free gift, let me show you this. There's two verses that prove that. Romans 3, verse 24 being justified freely by his grace through, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Okay? You're justified freely by his grace. The grace is a free gift. Romans chapter 5 and verse 15. 
but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if though the offense of one many be dead, for much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. Okay, it's a free gift. That's simple. And you jump down to um, verse 18, says the same thing. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men condemnation, even so by the righteousness of the free gift, again, okay, free gift, came upon all men unto the justification of life. Okay, it's a free gift. Okay, salvation, God's grace, is not something you have to earn through like doing works and enduring and stuff. It's Roman Catholicism what this guy is preaching. The charismatic movement is just Roman Catholic, essentially. They're preaching, I mean, they, yeah, they don't do the whole Mary bowing down to Mary and all the other stuff, but in terms of salvation goes, they line up with the Roman Catholics. So don't be deceived by this this heretic. He's a again he's a charismatic wingnut. He's into the tongue talking, Holy Spirit baptism of the fire, you know all this other stuff. I have some articles on my uh, website refuting this whole baptism of the fire and the, the all this charismatic nuttiness. So don't be deceived by heretics like this. Again, they're papists. They're Roman Catholics. So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.